It's um, June 18th and we're a week and a half away from pushing that queen down to that bottom box. That bottom box is nicely hatching out now. The queen we want in that top box laying up top. Um, we're noticing uh, fields coming in bloom. Alfalfa is blooming now. Um, you know, hay fields are being cut, but anything with seed production, uh, there's a nice bloom going on. Hopefully the bees don't get sprayed. Uh, we have canola bloom all over the countryside, just starting, that early canola is starting to bloom. The other side of my apiary there hasn't even thought about it yet. So I'm going to be going around, uh, staging my work through the apiary to push these queens down to the bottom box in about a week and a half. But for this next week, I'm going to go through with the crew and we're going to equalize. I'm just going to take down the strong ones a little bit and boost the weak ones. And the reason I want to do that is I kind of want to measure their growth still just a little bit. Uh, take, you know, that excellence off some of those high performers because there's more chance they're going to swarm if we leave them too big. And give them to the weak just to kind of give them a little bit of a boost before we send her back down to the bottom box and send them into the flow. So I'm going to show you what I'm kind of talking about here. Here's a hive right on the money where I want them. You can tell just by the hive activity from the top here. This frame, that frame, that frame probably have, uh, where the queen has probably, probably been working laying brood. So there, they're right where I want them. There, these guys are nice too. Let's move that over a bit. That frame, that frame, that frame, and that frame probably have the queen laying into them, which is perfect. Not a whole lot of resources up top. Through this round, we kind of see how close we were with our split and evening out all the hives. I'd say this, uh, this hive looks pretty good. Brood, brood, brood. Maybe, you know, so there's a lot of attention up in the top box here. Not a lot of resources stored. Perfect. I'd like to see that. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so this hive's too big. I can tell it right off the mark. So I'm looking down between the frames and I'm not sure how easily this translates through the video. But we have attention to all the frames right across the top box. Not only that, but boom, 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 boom. Where there's honey being stored in the top box here. So what we want to do with this hive is we're going to pull this, this guy down a little bit. So by doing that, we're going to maybe pull a frame or two of honey, give it to a hive that has very little resources in the top box. We're also going to look at how much brood is being laid in the top. If there's three or four frames, maybe we'll leave them with two frames. We'll take two frames away from them just to pull, just to pull a little bit back, just to help uh, pull that the progression of that hive back just a little bit. So it'll take that kind of swarmy spirit out of them in about two or three weeks. So that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to take the swarming out of them is what we're trying to do. And I can see this one probably be swarming. The big hive, lots of bees will produce you lots of honey. But don't let them fool you because this hive, if it swarms, then they're going to produce almost nothing. As compared to a hive that looks a little bit weaker right now, these guys will grow. And if they don't swarm, that population will continue to grow into a massive hive to bring in that honey flow. So it's a balance you guys have to figure out. It's uh, very subjective and what's, it, what differenti differentiates uh, beekeepers from one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some resource from here. Okay, so let's just work through this hive to see what we've got. Bees are in a great mood today. But I haven't started the smoker yet. We've got a little bit of resources going on in there. I imagine there's eggs in this frame and there is. This frame is pretty much laid out with eggs, which looks awesome. And queen cups in the bottom. These are all queen cups yet.
there's no eggs in these. Which tells me that she's that this hive is, you know, just a bit a little bit overbalanced. They're just a little bit too strong. Okay, so this frame is full of eggs. I'm gonna leave these guys in here. What do I have here but a frame of cap brood? Beautiful. And there the queen is. Well, she's probably in the top box, I know that, because she's laying. Uh, up into the top box, she'll be here for a little while until she moves back down. So a good chance she's up top. top. So I found her. So I'm going to put her aside. And what I can do now is I can skim away the strength with the bees on the frame, which is really beneficial. If I don't find her, typically what I do is I just shake the bees off the frame. So here we go. Full frame of brood. Look at that frame of brood. It's absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to pull that one away. I don't want to split these guys down too hard because I want them to produce me a huge crop. I'm setting them back a little bit just by taking that brood away, taking away all that energy. Get a visual on here again. She's going down, taking this frame. There, I've just skimmed a nuke from these guys. And hopefully with these efforts, I've averted these guys from swarming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put these guys back together. But what I'm going to be doing is using these bees uh, to boost weaker colonies through the apiary. We'll just continue assessing our hives now. right on the money it's pretty quick work because all you got to do is take a peek in if you know what you're looking for these guys are borderline but I'll leave them they look good once you know what you want to see you just keep looking for that these guys are right on the money these guys are making me happy the apiary appears to be ready for the honey flow these guys are a bit so I'm gonna pull these guys down I'm going to continue on just trying to find a weak one to show you guys. Right on the money. It's a little bit big. Pull a brood frame from these guys yet. Okay, so these guys are a little bit weak. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this hive and I'm, I'm going to give them a bit of a boost. So they're not, they're hardly even up to the top box. These guys could use two frame brood boost and open up my, my donor box. It so happens I have two frames of brood here to drop in. Just like that. These bees are going to mingle quite nicely. I don't worry about spraying them down. I could use Honey Bee Healthy or something to spray them, but I find bees mingle with each other beautifully this time of year. They're so focused on other things other than fighting themselves. So, let's put a cap on these guys. And we're gonna go into here and we're gonna pull some brood out of here. guys are a bit big and searching for the queen is a lot of work what I typically do is we just go through and if we don't find the queen we just shake all the bees off the comb this is a frame full of uh, nectar these guys are a little bit big they, they almost have this top box full of nectar Now we get into the eggs. 
frame of eggs. Here's a frame full of larvae. Beautiful. Cat fruit. So we're going to harvest this frame. Shaking all the bees off it because I don't want to bring the queen with me. Okay, so the queen can't be there. Put an empty frame back in. Let's see what we got going on here. Ah, another frame full of brood. Looks awesome. Hatching, in fact. So because these guys are so full, I'm going to take both these frames away. So this is kind of the so this is kind of where you have to lend your judgment to how much you got to take away, how much you're going to leave in there. It's why I have a hard time hiring people to figure this out for you. There's uh, some more brood here. So I'm going to keep this behind. This is young brood. Lots of eggs. I haven't found the queen. There's a little bit of resource there. Maybe what I'll do, maybe what I'll, what I'll do is I'll give What I'll do is I'll give this little bit of honey to this hive to help them along a little bit more. Empty, drop a frame of nectar honey in there. Okay, these guys have been boosted, these guys have been taken down. So it's just that easy. It doesn't take us very long in the yard. To uh, sort things through, um, you know, take about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to go through and just even things right out. Okay, so I identified this hive as being a small one, needs a bit of a boost. Nothing going on up here. I'm gonna give them two frames of brood to help them out a bit. Take a look down here. Actually, I'm gonna have to give them a frame of food too. Frame of brood. Ouch. Brood. Frame of food. Instant boost. So you'll kind of see how, uh, like we're managing right now, I have 1200 going that we're trying to manage and maintain for the honey flow. So we have a lot of hives to look after, uh, not enough time in the day to fuss over them all. So we, um, we employ all these little tricks to, uh, to manage our workload and manage swarming keep these hives in tip-top shape and manage them to express their absolute brilliance throughout the spring and then right into the honey flow to collect that honey crop. Because we only have one chance at getting, it, getting at those flowers and if our hives are not ready when those flowers come due, um, we miss the honey flow and then we don't make any money and we can't pay the bills. So we have to be able to manage more hives and less time with workers. So as you watch my videos all the way along here, you kind of see all the little tricks and what we do to help manipulate these hives into the brilliance we need from the pull in this honey flow.